So I finally got a new laptop. And my old laptop still works fine. This is the old X250. And a lot of people say, hey, Tom, what laptop are you using? Uh, I've got a review of this from, I've had this for a number of years. And one of the things I wanted to show, and especially holding it up like this, do you see, I have worn it down to being glossy. This thing has actually been a tank. And right here, even ThinkPad's worn out. Now, the ThinkPad series I've been using since IBM used to have ThinkPad, then it was changed over to Lenovo, it was sold to them. I think they were the actual manufacturer uh, of them and IBM you know, sold the whole rights to them. And they've been producing for a number of years, but I've been a ThinkPad user for a very long time. They've always had really good tactile keyboards. Like the feel to them is great. And that's kind of what, you know, really sold me on. And the X series is, like I said, this has held up really well. It may or may not have fallen a few times. Uh, and you know, with a solid state disc in there, no disc damage, uh, you know, plenty of stickers on it, which clearly bother a lot of people. A little comments on there, but I don't like having stickers on there. And you know, this has the whole docking system on there, but I never used it. It does have the extended battery, but this was so good to me that I couldn't resist, even though reviewing other laptops, I decided again to get a ThinkPad laptop. And as you can tell by the lack of stickers, it must be new. That is correct. I just uh, got this yesterday, loaded Linux on there, but let's start with the specs on it. We're actually gonna pop it open and review it real quick here. Uh, this is a 14 inch versus the smaller display that was on the X250, uh, but still 19, 20, 10, 80. Eighth gen Intel quad core i5 d 250OU, 1.6 gigahertz, uh, UHD graphics, it has a Toshiba 256 gig NVMe in here, which is quite fast, but it has also, and this is just something they uh, add on in this particular deal, was a one terabyte hard drive, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, Intel wireless with a two by two, Bluetooth and a 45 watt hour battery. Micro SD reader, which is strange, non backlight keyboard, disappointing, um, but let's talk about this a little bit. So I'm actually showing you the Amazon deal that I bought this from, and I just couldn't pass it up at $779. I wanted the backlit keyboard that comes with the T series. So the L series, this is an L480, and they have a T480, which is a higher end one, and it has a few more things you can get with it. This does not have the fingerprint reader. Uh, this does not have a docking station option on the bottom of it that you would get with some of the other ones. I believe the newer T-Series comes with that. I'm not an expert on every one of their models, uh, but for the price savings, and this is a just slightly slower processor than you get in a T-Series, but it works perfectly fine for me. And I need a new laptop because I have some traveling to do, and that traveling is going to require me to do some video editing while I'm on the road for a few days, or at least I'd like to do video editing. So I'm taking out the one terabyte drive, putting another SSD in there. So I'll have an NVMe boot, another SSD for storage, enough to get the job done. Essentially, I have a 240 uh, extra laying around that will go into this. Now, the laptop itself, and we'll go an overhead view here, is laid out like any other Lenovo uh, ThinkPad that I've had before. So layouts are similar. Now, this is something people may not like, the fact that the function and control keys are reversed because you expect the function key to be right here. Good news, there's a BIOS option, and this was in the previous one as well, that allows me to swap these keys. So function and control are actually swapped right now because my finger uh, is used to being right here to hit the control. Keyboard. Plenty of uh, responsiveness, and I'll turn it to the side here so you can see. It's still got the same feel as the keyboard did on my other one, but without the backlighting, like I said. I wish it had the backlight, but it doesn't. Typing's easy. Uh, the texture, though, and I don't know if it's because I've worn the other one smooth. This one seems to have more of a texture, still plasticky, uh, but it doesn't have the smoothness that I seem to have on there. But I can't remember if that was like that several years ago or just over the years I've worn it to be that smooth. But it's still really easy uh, to feel. Still has a little mouse here, so you can move that around. I am never, ever use it, but I know some people are like a huge fan of that. Uh, I do like the larger trackpad. It does make two-finger scrolling so much easier. Just put the two fingers on there, easily, quickly scroll, uh, and you have the buttons up here for the clicks, or you can just, of course, do the double tap. Uh, it does have the option up here with the function keys, so you can switch them back and forth, uh, so you don't have to help. Well, it would be this key to change them around or leave them at the default, like the media keys at the top. One thing I really want to comment on, I've reviewed several laptops that are dedicated, designed for Linux by other companies, and those are nice because everything works out of the box. This almost so close to working 100% out of the box. I will show you the one change I had to 
uh, make on this for Ubuntu. And I noticed uh, people in the Arch forums and Ubuntu forums both had the same problem is the trackpad. There is one minor thing you have to do to get the trackpad working in this particular device. So this is the one thing I had to do to get it working. Here is the Elan Tech touchpad not working after upgrading to 1810-1804. This does have that same touchpad and we'll let you uh, spare all the reading here and show you actually what needs to be done. So there's right here where you talk about changing firmware IDs and touching this, that, but this is the important part. Grub, command line, Linux, pmouse, Elantec, SMB bus, zero. Where do you do that? Well, that's in Etsy default grub. So if we go vim, Etsy default grub, actually we would need to do, if we do this properly, sudo vim, Etsy default grub. And there's that command I added, grub, command line, Linux, PS, mouse, Lantec. I'll go ahead and exit this. And then you would go sudo update grub. It'll update it and that makes it work every time on boot. So add that line, reboot the computer, magic, it works fine um, until they have it fixed. It is a known issue with there. So that's the only thing I had to do to get Linux working on this fully and everything else worked out of the box, everything but the touchpad. So I plugged a mouse in to finish setting it up quick Google search of touchpad not working at L480 brought the site and I'll leave a link to that right there. Now I'm currently running on this Pop OS 1904. Uh, like I said, other than that change, it loaded perfectly fine. I set my drive up encrypted like I always do and I will be encrypting the other drive that we add to it. Um, but everything else has worked perfectly fine on this. So the next thing we're gonna do is shut it down and take a look at the physical layer, take a look at the parts on it and pull it apart because let's look at what's inside because I haven't looked yet. I'm gonna put that hard drive in. So for ports, we have a USB-C for power delivery. We have another USB-C over here. We have a standard USB-A, and all these are 3.1, and they support power delivery, DisplayPort, and data transfer on the USB-C. So I haven't tested the DisplayPort functionality in Linux on there. That'll be a future video, uh, but that's kind of nice to have. We also have the HDMI, an odd choice of a micro SD reader. So I thought that was a little odd that it's micro, not to your standard, but hey, whatever. Full-size RJ45, which is handy because I use this for a lot of networking. This side here, headphone jack, another USB-C 3.1, and vent for the uh, fans. Pretty simple. So now let's take it apart from the bottom. Had to use my little plastic tool. There was a couple stubborn clips along the bottom, but nothing too difficult to get out. So we see we have the both pieces of memory here, the large battery, interesting fan design there. That looks pretty clever. A really small MVME over here, but other than that, pretty, pretty simple to work on. So this is the part we want though, is to get this hard drive out to put our SSD in. It's got a handy little pull tab here. So, uh, well, I say handy, but this took a little more. There we go. That came out and this was, uh, I did lift that up. So let's put in the other drive, just a standard one terabyte spinner. Be very careful, this comes off the whole, there's no screws holding it in from the sides, it's just a little rubber thing here. And we gotta get this off, it's got some adhesive on it. Be very careful. And away we go, kind of. Well, that, there we go. Had to get some grip under it and slide it out. So there we have that and it's all apart. Let's put the other drive in. And we're gonna put in this sand disk that I had left over from my build because I switched my computer to NVMe. I've already erased the drive. It's just a 240, but I just need a little extra storage on top of what's already in here because if you, uh, if I go and travel and do a little bit of media creation, definitely gonna need somewhere to put those data files more than the card. I like to have backups of everything. Getting that piece in was a little bit more challenging than I thought, uh, but it just has to go in there far enough so you kinda of hold this up and clip it back down. Last thing we're gonna do is the adhesive was on the other drive. So we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive here. We have a little bit of double-sided tape. So I want that just to hold down because it'll look nicer and keep everything in place. We're gonna put this double-sided tape here and away we go, now we're nice and tight. Now, the last thing I'm actually gonna do is before I put the lid back on, I will 
go ahead and test this. Also, while we're looking at the bottom, uh, I will comment that the sound on this is mediocre, but I don't really use this for sound. It does have two grill spots right here with the two speakers uh, that are downward firing, so it doesn't make the absolute incredible audio experience, but that's not why I bought the laptop for. I will also note before assembly, I like when they do the screws like this. I did not have to take the screws out. They're all here and they have a little clip on them that keeps them from just falling out. So all the screws are still exactly where they need to be. So the system booted up fine, recognized the hard drive, and we're all set. We installed the drive I wanted in here. Maybe I'll get a bigger one later, but for now, a 240 gig drive for the amount of content I will be producing while I'm traveling will be fine. Plus, I still have the 256 gigs here, and I'm not using it. Now, when I do set this up, I will, and I comment on this all the time, I will set it up as an encrypted system. Now, lastly, the thoughts on this laptop, my final overview, besides the sound being mediocre, the screen. People complained that the screen wasn't as bright. I will admit, it is not as bright as my X250, but you are looking in bright studio lights, which if I find the right angle, I can get some gloss going on here and you can see some of the shine. But overall, I find it very, very usable. I'll admit, I have this set brighter, and I believe right now, let me make sure. Yeah, we're at maximum brightness for this. It's still completely readable under studio lights. So obviously for home use, it should be fine. I'm not sure how good it's gonna be in direct sunlight, um, but I pretty much don't use my laptop in direct sunlight. I, the X250 was a little bit brighter, but I actually never used it at full brightness. I generally kept it uh, at a little bit dimmer. But also, I like the way that uh, the Lenovo's do this, uh, this whole stand up straight thing. It's actually easier because a lot of laptops stop right here. Being able to just go a little bit further is kind of cool, I will admit. I've done that when I am uh, have a network plug plugged in and I'm up on a rack, sometimes looking down at it uh, when you're doing some network diagnostics. But I really like the laptop. I've only had it for a day. I'll do maybe a follow-up review later. But uh, like any of the Lenovo series, there's something I've been probably going to really enjoy. They haven't disappointed me yet with any of the models I've had in the past. And like I said, I've been using the whole ThinkPad line of laptops for quite a bit of time. Well, that's my thoughts on it, and thanks, and I'll leave a link where you can get this on Amazon as configured as you've seen on here. Um, they still have it on sale as of right now in September of 2019. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and... Let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.